Okay, welcome back to another edition of uh, Skyrim Book Club with me, Terry the Wood Elf. Um, last time we read Thief, and um, actually Beggar is the first one in that series. Um, so I decided we should probably read read Beggar. Um, there's Iona. Is that her name? Yeah. My house, Carl. I'm in Riften. Um, thank you. And you as well. Um, I got a tip. We're in Riften right now, obviously. Um, I got a tip that there was a copy of Beggar at Helga's bunkhouse. I wonder if I have it here. No. I don't see it. See, I haven't really, like, curated my bookshelves here, obviously. I just kind of put shit wherever. Um. Anyway, I just want to check out what's going on down here, because I haven't been here in a while. Ooh. There's my, uh, Dark Brotherhood armor and my old Thieves Guild armor. Pretty cool. <clears throat> Alright, let's go... Let's go to Helga's bunkhouse. I gave Serana my old uh, Nightingale armor, as you can see. She looks very cool in it. Alright. Let's do some thieving. I'm sure Helga won't mind if I borrow her book. You lost? I'm not lost. Hey, what's up? Oh, it's you. Come to extort more from me? Listen, you know who fucking runs this town, okay? And I'm gonna take for a bed? This is the wrong place. I have a house in Riften, okay? And you know that, so stop being condescending. I'm going to, uh, I'll return this book. Maybe. Probably. I think it's over here. Yeah, there it is. Alright. This place is kind of dreary. Alright. Let's head out. I don't have any specific destination in mind for our reading today. It's not a very nice day, honestly. Since it's sort of a spooky day, maybe we could just like go to the graveyard. I used to be an adventurer like you, and I took an arrow in the knee. Bummer. Go fiddling with any locks around here. We're going to have a real problem. Eat my ass. Like you could catch me. Alright, this graveyard is like creepy and cool. Well, maybe we could hang out by the statue of Talos. So quiet over here and nice. Talos guide you! There he is. Why don't we just get a little blessing? Just for good measure. You know, for the hell of it. Alright. Let's uh, take a look here. Alright, Beggar by Riven. Eslaf Errol was the last of the litter of five born to the queen of the prosperous Nordic kingdom of Erlgard. La oh, here we go. La Piero La Piercopa. La, Pier La Piercopa. <laughs> and her husband, the king of Erlgard, uh, Yotlaf. 
During pregnancy, the queen had been more than twice as wide as she was tall. Wow. And the act of the delivery took three months and six days after it had begun. That is a long time to be in delivery. Wow. It is perhaps understandable that the Lapira Copa elected upon expelling Eastlaf to frown, say good riddance, and die. Wow. Rough. Like many Nords, Yit- Yitluf <laughs> did not care very much for his wife and less for his children. This is bleak. His subjects were puzzled, therefore, when he announced that he would follow the ancient tradition of his people of Atmora of following his beloved spouse to the grave. They had not thought they were particularly in love, nor were they aware that such a tradition existed. Still, the simple people were grateful for the little royal drama alleviated their boredom, which was and is a common problem in the more obscure parts of northern Skyrim, particularly in Wintertide. Yeah, I get it. He gathered his household staff and his five fat, bawling little heirs in front of him and divided his estate. To his son, Yinop, he gave his title. To his son, Lair New, he gave his land. To his son, Soybud, he gave his fortune. To his daughter, Lasifitra, he gave his army. Yutluf's advisors had suggested he keep the inheritance together for the good of the kingdom, but Yutluf did not particularly care for his advisors, or the kingdom, for that matter. Upon making his announcement, he drew his dagger across his throat. Wow, this guy is for real. No joke. <laughs> One of the nurses, who was rather shy, finally decided to speak as the king's life ebbed away. Your Highness, you forgot your fifth child, little Islaf. Good Yotluf groaned. It is somewhat hard to concentrate with blood gushing from one's throat, after all. The king tried in vain to think of something to bequeath but there was nothing left. Finally, he sputtered irritably. Eastlaf should have taken something then, and died. Damn. That a babe but a few days old was expected to demand his rightful inheritance was arguably unfair. Very true. But so Eastlaf Errol was given his birthright with his father's dying breath. He would have nothing but what he had taken. Since no one else would have him, the shy nurse, whose name was Druzba, took the baby home. It was a decrepit little shack, and over the years that followed, it became more and more decrepit. Unable to find work, Druzba sold all of her furnishings to buy food for little Islaf. By the time he was old enough to walk and talk, she had sold the walls and the roof as well, so they had nothing but a floor to call home. Damn, that sucks. And if you've ever been to Skyrim, you can appreciate that that is scarcely sufficient. Yes, it gets very cold. Druzba did not tell Islaf the story of his birth, or that his brothers and sister were leading quite nice lives with their inheritances, for, as we have said, she was rather shy and found it difficult to broach the subject. Well, damn, lady, this is like his family history. You need to, like, let him know. She was so painfully shy, in fact, that whenever he asked any questions about where he came from, Druzba would run away. <laughs> that was more or less her answer to everything, to flee. Well, I mean, I know what that's like. In order to, co to communicate with her at all, Eastliff learned how to run almost as soon as he could walk. He couldn't keep up with his adopted mother at first, but in time he learned to go toe-heel, toe-heel if he anticipated a short but fast sprint, and heel-toe-heel-toe -toe -toe if it seemed Druzba was heading for a long-distance marathon flight. <laughs> he never did get all the answers he needed from her, but Eastleff did learn how to run. The kingdom of Erlgard had, in the years that Eastleff was growing, become quite a grim place. King Yop, Yinop did not have a treasury, for Soybud had been given that. He did not have any property f or for income, for Lernu had been given that, and he did not have an army to protect the people, for Lysifitra had been given that. Furthermore, as he was but a child, all decisions in the kingdom went through Yenop's rather corrupt council. 
It had become a bureaucratic, exploitative land of high taxes, rampant crime, and regular incursions from neighboring kingdoms. Not a particularly unusual situation for a kingdom of Tamriel, but an unpleasant one nonetheless. The time finally came when the tax collector arrived to Drewsba's hovel, such as it was, to collect the only thing he could, the floor. <laughs> Rather than protest, the poor shy maid ran away, and Eastloff never saw her again. Wow, tough break. Without a home or a mother, Eastloff did not, or a floor, Eastloff did not know what to do. He had grown accustomed to the cold open air in Drewsba's shack, but he was hungry. May I have a piece of meat? he asked the butcher down the street. I'm very hungry. The man had known the boy for years, often spoke to his wife about how sorry he felt for him, growing up in a home with no ceilings or walls. He smiled at Eastleff and said, Go away, or I'll hit you. <laughs> Eastleff hurriedly left the butcher and went to a nearby tavern. The tavern keeper had been a former valet in the king's court and knew that the boy was by right a prince. Many times he had seen the poor ragged lad in the streets and sighed at the way fate had treated him. May I have something to eat? Eastleff asked his tavern keeper. I'm very hungry. You're lucky I don't cook you up and eat you, replied the tavern keeper. Eastleff hurriedly left the tavern. For the rest of the day, the boy approached the good citizens of Erlgard, begging for food. One person had thrown something at him, but it turned out to be an inedible rock. Ugh, sucks. As night fell, a raggedy man came up to Eastleff and, without saying a word, handed him a piece of fruit and a piece of dried meat. The lad took it wide-eyed, and as he devoured it, he thanked the man very sweetly. If I see you begging on the streets tomorrow, the man growled, I'll kill you myself. There are only so many beggars we of the guild allow in any one town, and you make it one too many. You're ruining business. It was a good thing Eastleff Errol knew how to run. He ran all right. Eastleff's Errol story is continued in the book Thief. Damn. This guy had bad luck. For sure. But it's a very interesting story. Humble beginnings. Well, I guess not humble beginnings, but then uh, reduced, reduced circumstances. But, uh... It's a charming book. Much better written than a lot of the books that I've read before. Don't you think? Um, she seems to be agreeing. Anyway, um, just another gray day in Riften. And, uh, another episode of Skyrim Book Club with Cherry the Wood Elf. So I guess next week we'll probably do Warrior, since that's the next one in the series, by Revan. Um, and, uh, yeah, we'll learn more about Eastloff and all his crazy adventures. All right, guys, until next time, signing off.